Station from Eastern Cuba near Cuba, Cuba North, 78 West, to the Honduras Nicaraguan border near 15 North, 83 West, will stall this afternoon and dissipate tonight. Moderate to fresh northwest winds. What can you do with ham radio? Probably a lot more than what you realize. So we're going to do a series of videos and get you excited about getting into amateur radio and upping your comms game for your preparedness. Hang with me. This is Sheepdog Preparedness. Are you ready? All right, as we get into these uh, various amateur radio subjects, I'm going to keep things very simple. I'm going to keep it easy to understand as I possibly can, just to hopefully at least pique your interest in getting involved in amateur radio and then give you some ideas about how you can potentially involve amateur radio into your uh, preparedness uh, plans. First thing we're going to talk about today in this first presentation is APRS. <clears throat> and most ham operators will just pronounce it as APERS, and you'll hear it referred to as uh, Automatic Packet Reporting System or Automatic Position Reporting System. Both are pretty accurate. I think the official defini the definition is Automatic uh, Packet Reporting System. And in order to use APERS as a ham operator, you need a minimum of a couple of pieces of equipment. On the transmitting end, there needs to be some GPS method to pull the location from the GPS satellites. There will then, before you can transmit that signal through your ham radio, you need something to convert that data to, over to something usable. And most of the time, that's going to be a TNC or a terminal node controller. Uh, TNCs come in tons of different configurations and we'll talk about one of the, the most easy methods here in a little bit. So signal comes from the satellite, TNC takes that signal information, transmits it th out through the radio and it can go in one of several different directions. Uh, that, that information can be fed uh, up to uh, satellites that are amateur radio satellites. It can be bounced through a repeater system which when you're using digital modes is called a digipeater. Uh, you know in ham radio voice wise we use repeaters all the time to extend our range. You can take a little, small little handheld, uh, talk through a repeater and maybe be able to talk to a ham operator that's hundreds of miles away. So digipeters will do that same thing. Take that digital signal, bounce it around and extend its range. Or you can go direct. Uh, you could potentially be running APRS on a separate frequency than the normal uh, nationwide uh, designated APERS frequency and just be pinging back and forth between those two radios showing this radio where this person is located. And then on that end, the receive end, you also need the TNC again and then some sort of mapping program or the website. There is a, a designated APRS website for the entire globe and we'll take a look at it here in a few minutes. Um, there's some little graphics up here showing equipment too, uh, you know, handheld GPS potentially. Now, stop and think, you know, you've got something like this on your person all the time. I was getting ready to pick up my phone and show it to you. Kind of hard to do when the phone's doing the recording. <laughs> so, you, you have your cell phone, which is already receiving its location information uh, through the use of GPS satellites. So, there's part of the equation already. The phone can run the software, and so I'll show you a very simple way of getting started in APRS with some pretty inexpensive equipment, and some of it's stuff you probably already have. Well, just about all of us have a cell phone. Many of us have a tablet. You usually will have you know some form of computer in today's home laptop desktop whatever it may be and this is the the radio that just about everyone it seems has anymore the the good little starter handheld when i first got my ham license in the early 90s you couldn't touch a handheld for under 
a hundred dollars and you know think about inflation levels what that would be nowadays but um these little radios these baofeng chinese radios i know just as many hams that have them as non-hams uh, i'm sure it doesn't sit too well with the the mainline companies like kenwood icom yesu and whatnot but these little radios do the job without gouging your pocketbook so if you're thinking about getting into ham radio at all this is the dude I suggest you start with a little buff on UV5R models. 25 bucks on Amazon. Operate on 2 meter and 440 ham frequencies and also receive police and fire and weather and all that good stuff. Uh, so they make a, a great little radio to get you started without, you know, breaking the bank. So we talked about in the, uh, the earlier slide that you need the GPS. Well, your phone uh, we'll, we'll just pretend for, for lack of discussion, for sake of discussion here, this is this will be our phone. It's pinging the signal from the GPS satellite so it knows its location. We need to be able to transmit that location, so we've got the radio. So here's our little TNC device. This uh, is put out by a company called MobiLinked. Uh, MobiLinked has uh, a couple of different models. I'm not sure if, I don't think you can even buy this one anymore. This is the TNC2. They now have the TNC3. Uh, this one was around $100. I think the TNC3 right now is going for about $120. Uh, there are other ways of doing it too, but for portable and mobile, this is this is the most simple. It, you know, very simple. Uh, this TNC uses Bluetooth technology, so you don't have to tether it to your phone or your tablet. It only has to be connected to the radio. So you buy your mobile link TNC, and you buy the cable that's correct for your radio. This cable that I have here is a Kenwood slash Baofeng cable. So now those are tethered. I turn it on. It's flashing quickly, telling me it's looking for a device to connect to via Bluetooth. So we connect it to our phone or our tablet. We launch the app for Apers. And boom, there we go. The GPS position is decoded. Transmitted through this via Bluetooth, the signal goes through the cable, keys the radio, sends the little packet burst of data telling other radios this is where this radio is located. So simple, pretty slick little deal. Aircraft use a very similar system called ADSB, Automated Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. Uh, constantly sending a signal from the aircraft and they're doing it all day long over your head and you don't realize it they're sending that signal out it's decoded by ground stations and it tells that aircraft's current location the speed it's traveling it's heading and a bunch of other information um, this is the ham radio version of that basically uh, aprs is just a way of sending your position report to whoever you want to send it to or the world if you're going to use uh, the, the mainline software or the APRS uh, global uh, website. So, on the other end, you know, we showed you the equipment you needed to transmit your APRS signal, the handheld, the TNC, and technically on that transmitting end, you wouldn't even necessarily need to go much further than that. Uh, if you have things configured, you will program the, the settings and it will regularly send your location. So on the other end, someone needs to be running some way of decoding that and displaying it on a map. And on this version I'm showing you here, this is running on my Raspberry Pi computer and there's the website we are on that is aprs.fi aprs.fi You can go to that website anytime, don't have to have your ham license, pull that site up, you'll see exactly what I'm looking at. This is a map currently running of of the St. Louis metro area uh, here in Missouri. And you got tons of icons on here. You'll see WX or weather stations. You'll see little houses. That's basically where that amateur operator's house is. You see a car down here and it's plotting where it's been driving. <laughs> uh, let's go to one of these. Can't see that on the screen very well. Let's pick a different one here. Let's try this guy right here. There we go. Click on that weather station, 36 degrees there, barometric pressure and whatnot. So that's one thing you can do with APRS, weather. Um, these little EOCs are, you know, emergency operations centers. Sometimes they will send out pertinent information about local emergencies and whatnot. Uh, the Ds that you see are, are various digipeters. The Is are an eye gate, which 
someone has to feed this information into the internet. It doesn't just magically appear there. So on the receiving end of APRS stuff, you will have operators who act as eye gates or internet gates. They take the information they're receiving and feed it in. If you're running that APERS Droid app on your phone, it will also feed that information in. So that's taken care of that through the back door and you don't have to worry about that and you'll pop up on everybody's map automatically. Um, and you can see there's a lot of usage with this. That It's pretty widely used. APRS has been around about 25 years. Um, we can zoom in and we can see there's a ton of stuff. Uh, they've got little icons they're putting on the screen for where various ham repeaters are located. There's another car there. Um, there's someone's house here. Afton, Missouri. So, you know, you can see already, I'm sure, you know, your wheels are turning. You're thinking about, what can I do with this? Uh, there's a truck there. <laughs> Probably a truck driver. It looks like a little 18-wheeler icon. And so this is just the online interface at APRS.fi. You can install the APRS Droid app on an Android phone and see this exact same thing that I'm looking at right here. And play around with it. See the usage. Uh, click on the icons and, and stop and think, you know, what would you use it for? Uh, and, and you can see, you know, we showed you that very little equipment needed to get started in APRS on the receive end zero investment you know it pull it up on the on the website or pull it up on your phone using the app starting out on the transmit side once you get your ham operator's license very simple $25 little handheld a little TNC to connect to it and uh, that's you know about it for about 150 bucks you've gotten started so let's say you don't want the rest of the world to know your location, but you still want to be able to send that location to someone that you select. You don't have to run the nationwide, worldwide APRS network. Uh, in the United States, the main APRS frequency is 144.390 megahertz. As a ham operator, you've got access to thousands of frequencies. Pick a different frequency run that frequency on the transmit end and the receive end and this is what your map will look like until you transmit your signal to the other station whom you want to receive you so you can be running APRS stuff off to the side away from the nationwide frequency and your signal will never make it to the eye gate and will never be shared anywhere else someone would have to be monitoring the exact frequency you are on and be running APRS to be able to decode your location. So pretty slick. There is a private way of doing this, so there you go. So as you can see, APRS can be a lot of fun. Um, you can do it for just a hobby, uh, something cool and fun to play with, but there are tons of practical applications for it, uh, not just the weather stuff, not just the emergency messages. Uh, think about using this in your communications uh, protocol with your your mag your uh, your group of folks that your preparedness plan operates with um, you know this is this is it on the transmitting side strap the little TNC to the back of the handheld and start the process going throw this in someone's backpack and everywhere they operate they can be tracked uh, think you know someone goes out on a recon mission or whatever and they've got this on them you can be back at your base location tracking their exact location um, nasty winter storm someone has to get out and about and you worry about them they can transmit their location you can sit back at home toasty warm and watch them on the map and see how they're progressing um, some other things that are cool too about the APRS system it ties in with so many different things. We talked about how it tied into the satellites. It ties into a global email system if you would like to use that as well. There's a program and a, a network called WinLink that ham operators all over the globe use to send emails over the airwaves. So type the email on the computer, 
Signal goes through your ham radio, through a TNC, out through the airwaves. On the other end is received by a Winlink receiving station who then acts as an eye gate, sending that into the internet and delivers that email. So you can send an email through that system that way. These two little devices connected together, cell phone receiving the Bluetooth signal from the TNC, run an app on your phone, and send an email to anyone in the world via RF only, radio frequency. No computer needed. No, You don't have to be tied into the internet. Someone further down the line has got that covered. There's also another cool little system built into APERS whereby you can send and receive text messages. So let's say you take a, a massive hike out in the middle of Rocky Mountain National Park. I love that place. Go there at least once a year and hopefully I'll go twice this year. I can strap this on and use my phone and if I'm not even in cellular coverage, which it's horrible in our, uh, in our MMP, very, very poor cell phone coverage in that area around Estes Park, Colorado and Rocky Mountain National Park. So what I could do is still be able to send a text message as long as my RF signal from a handheld makes it to one of those APERS stations. Um, we've tested this out before and it's pretty slick. Uh, like I said, cell phone tower goes down here locally next to me, for instance, and I can no longer send a text message to family members. I can pull up the APRS system. Tons of hams are like me. Their system is all off-grid. My All this ham stuff I run is all on, you know, off-grid. It runs on solar. Always, always goes. Power goes out, it's still running. So, pull the phone up, Set it to uh, go into the uh, APRS software itself. Tell it the phone number of the person that I want to send the text message to. Type the text message in. It will take that, decode it through the TNC, transmit it out through the handheld to one of the you know the nearest digipeter until it finally makes it to an I gate. And on that I gate station, it will be sent to the internet. It will ping out to the various servers it needs to go to and end up making it to that person's cell phone. And it's fast. It's seconds. So that person can then, even though they don't have their ham license, can reply to that text message. It will send it backwards to the APRS system, back to your ham radio, and show it to you on the app that you're running on your phone. So think about the applications of that. Just it's amazing technology and it's pretty simple. It, like I said, it's been around 25 years and not, not much has changed with it other than they've, they've added the texting capabilities in the last several years and, and the Winlink tie-in is pretty neat, but pretty simple little setup. A lot of fun to play with. Uh, good way to get your kids involved in ham radio. They would just think it's neat, you know, to, to track something. And, uh, think about all the ultimate Think about all the unlimited possibilities that are out there uh, with your preparedness setup. Pretty slick. So, hope you enjoy these videos. We're going to do several more on some ham radio stuff to try to see if we can get more people in interested in getting their ham license. Uh, and you can do this APRS stuff with the entry level technician license. Just get that tech license and you're set. You can play with APRS. So, keep watching what's going on, folks. A lot going on in the world. Get your comms in order. They are important. Are you ready?